What's going on everybody? JBM Design here. So I had a few questions on the Canon Pixma iX6820 as far as some of the, the printer settings and if you can print on transfer paper. Yes, you can print on transfer paper. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm doing it for the job that I'm working on currently. So if this is of interest to you, stick around. All right, so I've been asked by two people as far as printing on the Canon iX6820 because either they have the printer or they're planning to get the printer and they want to know if they can use transfer paper and how to do it. So I'm going to give a quick shout out to first, I am Money Made. He's on Instagram. I'm not going to post his name because I don't know if he wants me to, but shout out to you. Uh, originally, you asked me how to do it and I told you I would follow up as far as when I do a job. The second person, excuse me if I mess up your name, I wrote it down on the paper. Um... I don't know if it's Bebo or Bebo, Osorio, but on YouTube, you are AEW, All Elite Wrestling. Shout out to you. You actually just contacted me either today or yesterday, but I'm making this video because I do want to respond to the both of you and give you your, your feedback as far as your question. I will be printing on um, Nina 3G opaque paper. Let me confirm that. So yeah, I'll be printing on 3G jet opaque heat transfer paper from Heat Press Nation. This is just an instruction sheet that they sent me because I ordered a, uh, a sample pack. I ordered eight and a half by 11. I'm not gonna be using eight and a half by 11 today. This is eight, half and eight and a half by 11 is what it looks like. Um, because I ordered a 50 pack, uh, fell on the floor, of 11 by 17. Same thing, just a different size. The reason why I did that is because, one, I'm able to print large images, but the image that I'm printing today is not an exact size for 8.5 by 11. So what I did was I sized it so I can put two of them on an 11 by 17. That makes me use less paper. One sheet of paper, and I broke this down on this sample pack that I got. So basically, if you buy a 50 pack of 8.5 by 11, it's about $51.95. At the time that I priced it, it may change, you may catch the sale, I don't know. But the 50 pack of 11 by 17 cost $102.95 at the time that I was pricing it. Things can change. And this is specifically for Nina 3G Jet Opaque Heat Transfer Paper. So don't take my prices uh, and run with that. Things can change. Go look up for yourself. Go look at other places. You might catch a deal. But anyway, 11 by 17. Oh, sorry. I got some ink on my hand. 11 by 17 on average is about $2.10 per sheet. So, that being said, you need to do your markup so you can get your profit off of your, your, your jobs if you're doing transfer paper. Now, I'm going to turn the camera around because I have a 11 by 17 in the printer. I already actually printed some, but I'm going to show you the process of what I did. Just a side note, I'm talking fast because I'm actually trying to do this job. I want to get it done and have it ready for the customer for tomorrow. I actually want to have it done today, but it's not going to happen because I'm just getting off work and I'm trying to knock this out so I'm not up all night doing. I don't have that many shirts to do anyway, but still, I'm going to show you the process and then I'm going to get on this job. But anyway, let me flip the camera around and show you what I'm doing. Let me say, first of all, my old computer, which my old computer, wow, my old computer, which was this right here, it crashed on me. So I had to get a new one. So if anybody was asking me about pr uh, printer settings for the Canon Pixel 6820, it's all different for the MacBook. But as you can see, this is the print of what I'm going to do. Um, this is generally what it's gonna look like on the back. This is my mock-up. The text will be vinyl. So I need to actually print the design first because it requires a higher temperature and I don't want to burn the vinyl. So I have to place this on the shirt first and press it. So if I go over here, as you can see, here's the design. I have two of them on 11 by 17 paper. Um, and I put them side by side so I can print two at the same time. So Apple P or Command P brings up my print window. Now, I already have my settings set up in this window. Let me focus. So, what you may have to do is you got to click on setup, 
I went to Quality Media. I'm using Photo Paper Pro Platinum. Well, first you got to go to Photo Papers and then Photo Paper Pro Platinum. That's just the first setting that I use. I like the results. Then you got to go down here to Print Quality. And this is if you're using a Mac. Some settings are different if you're on a, um, a PC. Choose High Quality. Click Print. It's not going to print out of the printer when you click Print. It's going to go back to this screen. Then you go back down here and you go Page Setup. Now, I already have it saved where it says Paper Size. Click that drop down. You can do Manage Custom Sizes and you can put the size media that you're printing on. So I'm using 11 by 17. I already have that saved as transparency film when I'm doing sc uh, screen printing. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to select OK. And then I'm going to print. That's all I did to get to my printer. And I think I have it plugged up. Yeah, I do. So I put my printer on the floor because my shelf, it broke. So I got to repair that. And here it is. Now this printer does print uh, 13 by 19 paper, film, whatever you're trying to print. It does print that size. Now once it comes out of this printer, I'm going to bring it over here to this cutter. cutter. And I'm going to cut it down to size like that. So these two are from the first sheet that I printed out. It comes out you can see the quality. The quality is okay for this print. It can be better, but the customer sent me this image and it was not the best quality as far as file size. Um, so the better your picture is that you're trying to print, the better it's going to come out when you actually press on the shirt or print your design, whatever you're trying to do. Now I'm going to pick it up off of here, bring it over here to the cutter. And I don't know if I can do this with one hand. So uh, let's see if I can. Well, I can't do it with one hand. But you get the idea. Put it up under here. Cut the image out all the way around the border. For this image, I have to cut it out to get it right. Get all this white out. If you do not take this white out, it will transfer over to the shirt. I printed this in the right reading on the paper it says right reading which means you do not take the image and mirror it you print it just as you would look at it because what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to peel the back and then press it onto the shirt just like it is right here so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out because I can't hold it with one hand and cut four of these pictures are cut out and I got to be honest when I put it on the, uh, the cutter it wasn't cutting properly so I got this Part of my T-squared and my Exacto knife, and I just cut everything out. It was much easier. So next thing I need to do is get this down to the press, line it up on the shirt, and press it on. All right, so I got the shirt on the press. You want to slide it up. Make sure you don't have a, the collar on the actual platen area. Slide it completely off. You want to do like a five to seven second pre-press. Make sure everything's laying flat. We want it on medium pressure, 350 degrees for 30 seconds when you actually press the image. And like I said, I'm going to have some vinyl text over top of the image. So I need to measure the spacing and everything appropriately. So once this comes off, I'm going to put the vinyl on just to place it so I know where to put my print. But I have to print this first because I press this at 350 degrees. And that was longer than five seconds, I'm talking. And... The vinyl, I'm only pressing at 285 degrees, so I can't do the vinyl yet. All right, so now that I did my extra long pre-press, I'm going to slide the collar back off so I can measure it, which is harder because I'm not going to put any tape or anything on this. I'm just going to lay it down, but I want to get a general idea of where everything is laying. All right, so if you don't have a T-square, it's a great thing to invest in and get pretty much center up all your prints. And 
right there is good. Um, if you don't have T squared, generally you want to come down like four fingers from the collar, which is about three inches. It's about three inches for me. Um, let me get this centered. I'll take this vinyl. I know this isn't a video about the vinyl, but you also want to get a center for your vinyl. So you just do that by folding it in half and putting a nice little crease in it. And lay that on there like that. Then I'm probably going to come down about an inch or so. A little bit more than an inch. So I want this to be consistent on all the shirts. So I'm probably going to come down to about six inches. Nope, I take that back. I'm going to come down to five and a half inches on all of the shirts. I might have to think about that again once I get to the 2X, because I have a 2X, a 3X, and a 4X. I might have to relook at where I'm placing the images on those larger shirts. So what you're going to do with this is I folded it already, and I put a small little crease in it on both top and the bottom so I can align the center. And then you have to take off this backing. Basically, you just peel it off. There we go. So, you can see I got it split apart. You just peel the rest of this off. And the actual paper backing is a lot thicker than this part. And when you take this off, that crease may or may not be there. So I'm gonna actually put a harder crease in it before I take it off. Take this off, like so. Alright, and this is what you're left with. Nice flimsy film. So I'm going to five and a half. I'm going to go ahead and pull this vinyl back off. Actually, let me show you what it looks like. So that's generally what it will look like, but I'm going to pull the vinyl off and then I'm going to go ahead and press this design. So I'm going to slightly or lightly, you know, pull up the bottom of this shirt because I want to pull the collar off of this platen so it doesn't burn. You get any scorch marks? And I pull this up first so I don't pull the shirt underneath the design. Then you get some transfer paper, put that over top. Then the instructions from Nina says to get another piece of fabric and lay that over top of the transfer paper. Medium pressure for 30 seconds. Go ahead and slide this in. Okay. So I turned the camera off before the, uh, the timer went off. Everything popped open. But this is a cold peel for the Nina 3G Jello paper transfer paper. So that's what we got. Peel this off. I can't take this off yet because it's hot. So, if you're running uh, a few shirts, you can actually take this off, set it aside, peel it later. Um, or you can get something like a, a cool cloth, kind of wipe the heat out, let the heat transfer onto this material. But the platen's also hot, so I don't know how much is transferring because that's still hot. So I'm going to go ahead and move the shirt over to the table. Alright, so I transferred it onto the table. I got another piece of shirt, wiped it down. Now it's nice and cool to the touch. Now you want to pull this back in a nice, even, and smooth motion. So the corners are already kind of rolled up, so I'm going to go ahead and get this and just pull it on back. Now you have your transfer 
on your shirt. You see that? And that's how you put on a transfer. All right, so that's it for this video. I'm just going over how to put on these heat transfers on your apparel. So if you liked the video, if it was helpful to you, please like, subscribe. If you have any input, comments, whatever, put it in the description down below. And um, as always, be yourself, be your best. I'm out.